Okay, now once you got the sound, I can add MFX. Now here's how you do it. The MFX works this way. Take it off here, no effect. I'll press MFX for effect, and I'll hold it down, and we see we've got one selected. There's two, three, four, up to 24 different effects. This can be done easily. I can do it this way, then hit the sound. That's a tape effect. And right here you'll see the name of each effect, 1 through 24. Now, easy way to do this would be to just hold the MFX down and turn this wheel. Three. Turn the third one. So just hold the MFX down and turn the third one. And see that? We can pick and select from 1 to 24. Any effect we'd like. Now an effect will appear here. And if you wonder what effect it is, we can hold down effect, MF effects button, and turn the wheel here. Hold this down, turn the wheel, it's 14, see that? 12, 13, 14, I can go back here, I can go to 6. If you want to hear how it sounds, we'll press pattern, play. So you can apply effects to any sample you'd like to. Okay, sometimes you got a sample, you like your sample, saying, okay, I got my sample, and I got my beat going. Well, we want to change the tempo. Now we can change the tempo right here. We can go to Pattern. Then we'll select this Time BPM here. And then our window here, we'll see our BPMs. In this case, it's 102. I can turn my control knob to and change the speed of that pattern. And I can play it. Now it's 106. Now it's 124. So we can change the BPMs, which is beats per minute, to get the right BPM for our selected pattern. Okay, now I want to like sample something. So what I'm going to do here, I've got a cable I plugged into right here, into my mic line and just to my bass guitar. Now to sample something in, I'm going to hit bank B equipment, bank B, and I'll press record. And now we're blinking. I'm going to select the pad I want to record to. I'll select pad 9. Now I've got my external source right here selected and my mic line. See that? The mic is on. I'm going to play my bass. I adjust my level to get the right level so it's not too distorted, you know? I want to make sure it's right. I am using smaller speakers. Okay, now I'll try to record something. Okay, so we've got the actual input plugged into the back of our um, SP404. Put on the front right there actually to my mic in. I like to use my mic in sometimes for an input, let's say even a guitar or a bass or anything else, you know. You have to be creative at some point. Using a mic level is good, but also I'll use a bass line or something just to get the right kind of sound if I want to. Got the bass plugged in. So, make sure your levels are correct. I'll turn the levels up somewhat. I'm using smaller speakers. And then make sure we're not peaking out on our peak levels, alright? So now, got that going on, I'm going to press record. Once it starts to record, light goes on, I need to start playing. That's it right there. Now, I'll press record stop. You should do it quickly. That way, once you do the record stop, after you record, you won't have too much sample time you actually don't need. Okay? Next, we'll check out the sample. Okay, I've got my sample, so I'm pad 9. I'll play pad 9 right here. Very bassy sound, hear that? And there's my sample. Now, if I want to delete this sample, say, I don't like that sample, I want to try it again. I want to get something I really like. Okay, that's how you do it. You want to delete that sample, we'll press delete first. Then we want to pick the sample you want to delete. Let's find the one you want to delete. We're in bank B, it's the one here at 9. I want to delete that sample. Now I'll press delete again. 
it blinks a couple of times and that sample is gone. Watch this. So I've saved my sample memory time. If I want to sample again, I can do that. 